Clippers Mavericks round three between these two teams. Uh, they haven't met in the postseason since 2021. LA ousted Dallas 4-3 in the first round that year and has ushered out the Mavericks in the last two postseasons they've met. None of that sounds right to people, though. <laughs> it feels like they played much more recently and that Lucas Mavs won one of the times. But no, the Clippers have beat them uh, two times, but this is the third go here. Game one tips on Sunday in Los Angeles. One thing to watch in this 4-5 matchup. What do you got circled? Well, as you said, this is a different Mavericks team. This team plays defense, surprisingly. Surprisingly, I, I didn't know it was coming after the Gaffer trade, the P.J. Washington trade. They have looked good. Since March 10th, they've got the league's top defense. So over a month, and they rank first in rim protection. And the Clippers want to get in that lane. That's where they want to crash. And I'm looking at a, a couple of the guys. I'm, I'm looking at, I, I'm keeping it simple. Maybe it's just because I watch play-in games, and I just want performances from stars, but I'm looking at Kawhi if he's going to be back and be <laughs> able to do that it is strange I, I think you, as you said people don't know that the it was years ago that the Mavericks played the, the Clippers people don't know that Kawhi has been out for a while and yep. hasn't played uh, in April he, he played the first 62 of 68 games 62 of the first 68 games I should say and then he hasn't played in April he had uh, treatment for soreness related to his surgically repaired right knee and the sad part is or the worrisome part is I should say Teron Lue was optimistic he'd come back in those you know first couple first week or something you know like he'd yeah. come back but he's literally been out so the Mavs defense is real and with Kawhi Leonard it looks even more real I mean I think I think that is what I'm looking at it to see if the Mavs can just slow down the Clippers and Kawhi's, it looks like it Kawhi's status for game one already up in the air yep. and, and it's sort of a here we go again and Tass said he hasn't played since March 31st and this knee is causing them issues here. So I don't think the Clippers can beat the Mavericks without Kawhi. I'm not even sure they could beat the Mavericks with Kawhi, the way Dallas has played over the last little bit, and especially since the trade deadline, adding some defense there. But what are you watching besides Kawhi's health, I guess? I mean, Kawhi is the big question because he's the only guy on the Clippers that can really outplay Luka throughout the course of a series and make it tough for him. Uh, I guess if I'm a Clippers fan, I'm a little encouraged that he's already in for Team USA. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so he's on being healthy That's over right. the summer. Yeah. Maybe that means he's healthy right now, but we've also seen Kawhi dominate the first two games of a series and then be out for the rest of the playoffs. So huge, yep. huge question mark and not knowing what you're getting from Kawhi. The question for the, me then becomes, can James Harden actually score points? Can <laughs> he can he look like the James Harden that he was when the Clippers were going 26 and five in December? He's been playing through shoulder injuries, foot injuries. Uh, since the All-Star break, Harden's only been averaging 15 points per game on 39% shooting, 30% from three. And like you said, the Mavericks have been a pretty good defense. They're 13th in the league since the All-Star break, and they've been even better in the last couple of weeks heading up to the playoffs here. Not to mention, Harden is probably going to have the best matchups for scoring because yeah. you assume that, like, Derek Jones Jr. and P.J. Washington are going to guard the wings for the Clippers, whether that be uh, Kawhi or Paul, Paul George, George, depending on who it is. Kyrie probably is on Terrence Mann, which means Luka is getting some of the Harden assignment. Yeah. They're similar-sized players, and Luka has definitely given a better defensive effort this year, but there's got to be times when Harden is looking to get to the hoop, draw some fouls, rather than just being a pass boy. If all the stars <laughs> actually play in this series, it's wild. you got Luka, Kyrie, Kawhi, Harden, Paul George, and Westbrook. Apparently they've combined for 47 All-Star nods, two MVPs, two NBA Finals MVPs, and six scoring titles. That's just all <laughs> of the guys, but those are the superstars. Is there an X factor in this task from either side? That you're looking at i gotta go back to james harden as, as trey just said will the pass boy be the score boy that's the <laughs> important part here because he came to this team and was very excited to come to this team to be the third score really and now if Kawhi's out he's got to be a different guy he's got to be what he was in philadelphia last year second to joel and he's got to be second to paul george at the at the at the worst um and he was good in last year's playoffs i, I know it didn't end well at all, but he won games. He really did win games for the Philadelphia Sixers. He was the reason. They got up 3-2 against the Celtics, uh, but then it fizzled. And, uh, you know, Trey went through the numbers. It's been, it has been bad. Uh, the last dozen games, it's even worse. If you look at it this way, 36% from the floor, 26% from three, under four three free throws attempted per game, and that's where Harden used to make his money. And it doesn't look good. And Luca, I think, will be a pretty decent defender. We 
We always used Definitely to say. Definitely seen some yeah. more commitment to that end of yeah. the floor from him and Kyrie. They're, I mean, it's just this team effort. They buy, bought in a little bit more. Yeah, and you going through the matchups, that was a good call because if Luka's guarding Harden, it sure feels that way. It feels like Luka can stay in front of Harden. Why not? Uh, he can be that that strong guy that everybody used to say, oh, Harden's a really good post defender. I mean, Luka's very, very strong, and Harden ain't as quick as he used to no. be. And they're officiating the game a little differently. Yep, that's true. So it should be a good matchup. Uh, all right, well, let's get to the prediction then. TK, get us started here. Where are you leaning in this one? I think it's hard to pick the Clippers not knowing what you're getting from Kawhi, uh, especially considering the Mavericks look like a real team. They've been... I don't know, the best team in the Western Conference for the last 30 games here with the way Denver has, you know, not... They didn't finish the season strong, I don't think. We actually saw some, like, clutch mishaps uh, from Denver, and Dallas has looked really, really good. The question for me is going to be, what do they get out of their wings? I think Josh Green is going to have to have a good series, and Dante Axum is going to have to have a good series, not to mention P.J. Washington, Derek Jones Jr. Like, yeah, they got to get something from that foursome uh, of wings out there, and they got to hope for hot shooting uh, from Tim Hardaway Jr., as well, but I don't know. I think this is the time that the Mavs are getting through. So give me uh, the Dallas Mavericks in seven games. Okay, yeah. going the distance. Mm-hmm. Dallas winning in LA to win that game seven. Says Trey. Just to to speak to your point, yeah, the Mavs went sixteen and two there down the stretch, and then they sort of coasted. They rested those last couple of games once mm-hmm. they were locked in, so lost a few at the end. But uh, really good. Probably were the best team at least in the Western Conference. Or the last good stretch here. You uh, also taking the Mavericks. I am. Mm, yeah, I think there's going to be a lot of Mavericks picks in this yeah. series. It's it's not fair. Without Kawhi, it'd be <laughs> it would be way more interesting. I know it, it should still be a fun, very fun series, but if Kawhi isn't playing, Paul George is going to have to be awesome. He's really going to have to be extremely good offensively as the go-to guy. And as you mentioned, uh, the Mavericks have you know a bunch of guards. And, and wings and Dante Exum will, will probably get a, a, a lot of minutes out there even against James Harden he was really good when he was a member of the Utah Jazz guarding James Harden on the Houston Rockets he was physical he was really good so that's going to happen throughout this series uh, they, they're getting Derek Lively back it sure feels like as as the, the alternate to, to Daniel Gafford he hasn't you know played for a couple weeks now so they look like they got everybody back mm-hmm. they're healthy uh, and they're playing really, really well. I got the Mavericks in six. Uh, ooh, yeah, I'm taking the Mavericks in six. Feels weird saying that because I, I thought the Clippers would have their mon- have the the number here uh, of the Mavericks, but it ain't it ain't the same without Kawhi if he's not playing. Another uh, stat to illustrate the Mavericks turnaround here. This is from Schumann. If you take away the last two games, again, they rested Luca. They rested Kyrie. The Mavs were. 8.4 points per 100 possessions better after the trade deadline. After those big moves than they were before it. That was the league's biggest improvement by a wide margin, pre-trade deadline, post-trade deadline. So that's just been an incredible move, bringing those guys in, and Washington and Gafford, and helping the defense, and then letting Luka and Kyrie just cook, and they take over at times. They're awesome. And uh, you went Mavs in seven. You went Mavs in six. I'm going Mavs in five, because this Kawhi, man, too many times. I mean, he's already coming in uncertain. You said last year, Trey looked awesome for a couple games, then he's out for the rest of the season. 2020, 2021, you know, he's just out completely. Even the Raptors championship, the guy was playing with a bum leg the entire time uh, for a good chunk of that. So don't like their chances. This is, I think Dallas is finally going to get their, like, little revenge here and finally win one of these series. I know we're saying Kawhi's not playing, but he is supposed to be coming back. Yeah. And, and, and the reports are it is soreness in that knee uh, that's surgically repaired, and our man Law Murray of the Athletic, who's covered this team for a while, said that did happen in that year. I think it was 2021, um, early in the year, and he was able to come back after 25 days, which is you know a little shorter than what we're at right now. Uh, so he should be back, I guess. Uh, but it is, it, it feels like that time of year where Kawhi gets hurt, right? It is <laughs> late in the year, and he did play against 62 of the first 68 games. Maybe he should have rested. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Those in the end. A lot of injuries in the second half of the season, I'll say, for yeah. guys playing through the first half. Yeah. 